Keenan's yeah, Keenan's uh, day to day, um, working back, and I don't think you'll see him out there at practice today, uh, but day to day. We'll find out a lot more as the week goes on, but um, that's kind of where it's going to be here for a while. It's not going to be weeks, but it'll be day to day. Yeah, Lindsay, he's, he, Christian's a very complete football player. He's a complete back because he's an outstanding runner, runs with pace, vision. Um, he can break tackles, um, very elusive player, powerful player, uh, and then he's an outstanding pass receiver. He's a dangerous weapon out of the backfield, and he can split out as a receiver. Uh, sometimes they're, they're good pass receivers out of the backfield, but he can truly split out wide and be a factor too. And, um, and then as you saw last week, you know, now he's throwing touchdown passes out there. So a uh, very complete football player and a lot of respect for his game. What are the challenges? I was just going to say, with your defense allowing chunky yards per play, rushing, how do you guys slow it down? Yeah, uh, I think the story for us has just been a couple of those, you know, the, the explosive runs this year. Um, outside of those, uh, the the numbers look a lot different, and that's what we got to prevent in this game um, are, are explosive runs. And you got to do a good job of vicing the football and making sure it doesn't come down to one guy uh, because when they can cre- create those isolations where it's a back versus one person, those are the runs that go a long way. And so, you know, we got to have great penetration at the line of scrimmage, you know, edges, uh, and then our second and third level, we got to get multiple people to, to the football, and we got to tackle well. So uh, it's uh, going to be an 11-man operation, which is how defense is, but especially against them, um, they're trying to make it where one guy uh, has to make the play. So got to got to play team defense and get a lot of people to the football. What kind of challenge is it with so many players, Debo, George Kittle, and Christian, being so versatile? Like, how mm-hmm. do you – I know Durant has lined up in various places this season. How do you prepare when – their players that can catch and run can do various different things. Yeah, Bridget, uh, that's that's where the game is now is to have those those type of chess pieces, and you try to have them on all three phases of your team. And I know defensively, that's how we've always tried to design our defense. You know, since I've been a defensive coordinator, you have to have those uh, chess pieces that give you the flexibility to match up with offenses like this. Um, and th- these guys can line up anywhere. And they can do a lot of different things. They can catch the ball. They can run the ball. They can block. Uh, and so you need to have players on your team that can that can mirror that. And you can use your players as chess pieces to be aggressive. Um, and so we're lucky that we have some players like that on our team. And, and we're going to need them because those three guys you mentioned are really good players. Do you prepare any differently in practice this week when you're going against players that are so versatile? Like what can you do? Does Darwin take a certain amount of time in different positions, or is it the same every week? It's the same for him, but I think what you're trying to do is get the, the players on your work team that can best emulate those types of players, and that's easier said than done But because those players are so unique, and that's why they're, they're paid accordingly. Um, but you're just trying to make sure that your players are aware of all the things that they can do. And, um, again, those three guys uh, together, um, there's a lot of options for that football team, and so you can't practice – everything that they can do, but you just have to have, um, you know, kind of the inventory, the library of, okay, this is what they can do. This is what they've shown. This is what are possibilities. And, and then go let your guys go play fast. You know, you can't be thinking out there against a group like that. You can't be thinking you got to be playing. Just on that note, the, the inventory, obviously, they bring McCaffrey in. He gets two games there. But now they've had a bye week, you know, I guess that they'd be able to like, integrate him a little bit more into the offense, open things up for him. How do you prepare for that knowing that there could be a bit of unknown there? Yeah, I mean, just Kyle's done that th- with his backs throughout his career. Um, that's why that you know they went and aggressively made this move because when you have a, a back like that, it can it change the math. Uh, and then they have Debo, who can also play in so many different places. So um, you're just taking a look at the past and how they've utilized players like him. And and then you know they're running their offense. They're eight games into the season, and um, and they've played two games with him. So uh, again, it's more about us and what we do, not what they do. Okay. Yeah, he's going to be day to day, sore. Uh, it'll probably be a game time decision for him, uh, but working his way back. Um, I think he'll be out there. I don't know if he'll be doing anything. Brian, with uh, Michael Davis, since you guys got here last year, you guys have like moving him around because of his size and speed. Um, could this be a weekend where you maybe throw him against Kittle and kind of like the way you guys have in the past against uh, Kelsey and other guys like that? Yeah, Mike, that's one of Mike's, you know, uh, strengths is his size and his length. 
and he can play well against those bigger players, whether it's a bigger receiver or a tight end body type. So he does give you that flexibility. And, um, you know, as, as we said after the game, Mike had a quality game last week. He's played good football for us, and, and we're going to need that. He's got a lot of experience, and, and we're going to have to leverage that um, the best we can moving forward because, um, you know, an offense like this, it, it provides you, you know, a lot of challenges from a look standpoint. When uh, you guys move Derwin to edge and you guys move him more in the box, it's a Logie and Nazir in the back. How do you feel like they've done as a tandem when Derwin has to move around and do different things? Did you like the way they played on Sunday? Yeah, I think both those guys, uh, they played a lot together. You know, last year when we would go, when we put Derwin at other places, those two guys were playing together. So, again, using that chemistry to our advantage, um, and I think they both played well. I, thought, I think Nas, the last three weeks, has played really good football for us. Um, we're really pleased with where he's at, and Lowe's just steady for us, has done a good job on special teams, and, um, you know, we're going to need their experience to, to play well in this, in this game. Do you feel like you needed that kick in the pants to – the benching him against Cleveland to kind of get him going. Oh, I, I don't. I don't look at it that way, Fernando. I just. I think that um, you know we we have a lot of confidence in him, and we just wanted to make sure that we recentered him because he's he's played really good football for us since I've been here, and uh, sometimes we all need that. And uh, he's he's responded really well, been really good in practice, really taking charge in the game. And you know, last week against Atlanta, made a, you know some really big plays that allowed us to win that game. On your kicker situation going into the week, uh, it'll be the same as last week. Is you know kind of going into it with the thought of Cameron, uh, and then Dustin's working his way back, making progress. Same as Taylor. Do you see Chris this Chris Rumpf and chance he's back in practice this week? He's he's day to day, Daniel. Uh, there's a chance that he can play in this game, but he's going to be day to day, and it'll be more of a game time decision. Any, uh, you kind of touched on. Uh, He feels a lot better. <laughs> um, he feels a lot better. Uh, yeah, just he feels a lot better, and uh, that that counts for a lot. Um, but just I, I really felt like he was, um, you know, playing the way that he that he can play, and just felt really in control of the game plan. Um, Throughout the game, I thought it made really good adjustments and uh, was a really good decision maker, made fast decisions and played really well in the clutch. I mean, the third down numbers, I mean, some of those tight window throws to, to Dre specifically, those were all tight throws and accurate throws and made some plays with his legs. And then, you know, both two-minute drives, I mean, that's kind of, you know, textbook Justin playing really well at the end of the game. So, um, you know, just can't say enough about him, and he's practicing well. And I think the big difference between then and now, too, is that he's been able to practice full and being able to get that full timing and rhythm. And, um, again, he's, he's shown a lot of toughness, and, uh, you know, he's, he's been a good example for all of us. Is there anybody uh, who we haven't talked about injury-wise or illness or anything that wouldn't practice today that you know? I don't think so. I just know he's back in the building. It's good to see him. Um, he hasn't uh, made, you know, he's not there for practice yet. And I think that's, we'll, we'll let you know when he's going to come back to practice. But the, he's in a good, he's in good spirits. And um, I think we're getting closer to that practice point. Um, just don't know exactly when that's going to be. Do you see any similarities between him and Nick Bosa? Yeah, they were the same number, they had the same name. Um, they're both dominant, dominant players, complete players. Um, they're different players, I think, uh, in terms of their style, but the result is the same. You got to be aware of them every snap, uh, run game and pass game. Uh, Nick is just, he's an outstanding, complete edge player. You know, he's very physical. Um, he, he makes a lot of big plays, um, you know, plays with a motor. You know, I think that sometimes when you have special players, um, you know, you don't ever take for granted that they play really hard. You know, Nick plays really hard, just like Joey. Um, that's a superpower of both of theirs. And so a um, lot of respect for Nick and been watching Nick for years. And um, he's going to bring out the best in us, for sure. When you watch film of Nick, you know, this week specifically, are there any things that he does when you're like, oh, that looks just like Joey? And is there any advantage to being around Joey so much? And picking They're kind of similar. They kind of look similar in their three-point stance. Uh, they kind of look similar. Um, so uh, the way they kind of have that backhand, you know, 
in that sprinter position ready to, to get out of there at the starting blocks. But, um, you know, they're different players stylistically. I think they both would tell, tell you that. But just I know how close they are. I know they train together. I know they work together. I know that they study together. So uh, a pretty amazing bond, you know, uh, to have two, two brothers that are as special as they are and playing as well as they are. And I know being on the practice field with San Fran last year when they came here, that was really cool to see them on the same field. And, um, you know, literally wish Joey could be out there for, for this game because that would be pretty cool. Express to you any emotion about not being able to play? Yeah, I mean, Joey, you, you guys know Joey. Emotion isn't really a part of his equation. Um, uh, you know, he's pretty, uh, he, he's pretty flatlined. Um, but uh, I just, I know that um, he would love to be out there to compete, you know, and, and give our team a chance to win. And there is that brotherly love that, hey, I'm going against my brother and I want to show the world that, you know, that I'm one of the best. So, you know, hopefully we'll get that opportunity again for him. And, uh, you know, I just, I think it's, it's a cool storyline that, you know, they're both having, you know, great careers. Is there a report out there that you guys are signed Braden to the active roster? Yeah. Can you confirm that? Yes. Yeah. And then Austin to IR, is that the correspondent? Yeah. Yes, sir. Going back to special teams for a second, what do you appreciate about Ryan Pickett and just the work he's done with that group this year? Yeah, Eric, I think Ryan and Chris Gold have really just um, transformed our special teams culture and just, I think, um, making everybody on our team, including coaches, just uh, included in that, like building that team culture and that everyone's got a role that's important. And, you know, I think we've been able to get a lot of starters on special teams where um, that was always a vision of mine. I think now you have a deep enough team that you can play like that. Um, and, and I think that that's been good. And then I think just from a specialist standpoint, I think they've worked really well with our specialist. You know, that's where it starts. You know, we were able to, you know, get Dustin back, bring in Josh Harris and JK, and then you get Dre as your returner. And that's a good place to start. I think that those guys are all having quality seasons. And then what you got to do, I think, as special teams coordinators now in the NFL is you have to develop young players. You know, that's such an integral part of your team is taking these young players that maybe haven't, who have maybe not played special teams very much in college and getting them up to speed fundamentally and understanding the pro game. So I think they're both excellent teachers. They set great examples. And, you know, we're halfway through the season almost. But um, as you guys have seen, uh, it's a much different looking movie out there. And I'm really happy that they work for us. Trent Williams is obviously the anchor of that offensive line. Just what, uh, what have you seen from, from his play this season? Yeah, Trent's one of the best in the game. Um, you know, competed against him in the past, and he's as good as it gets. He's playing as well as he ever has. He's one of those, you know, rare NFL players who's got rare engineering and, um, you know, just has, has really played uh, his best, you know, with, with Kyle, for Kyle, and that's where it all started for him back in Washington. So um, one of the best players in the league at his position. Brandon, one mantra you used a lot last year was, you know, illusions, how there's illusions in the NFL. Just this year, what about your team, where you're at, five and three? Like, what is an illusion for your team and what is, what is not? Um, good question, Daniel. Uh, pretty high level um, <laughs> for Wednesday. Uh, I wish you'd give me more time to Friday. But uh, I just, I think, I think for us, um, you know, the, the season is nowhere near the finish. And, and I think you've got to understand that, that there's a long way to go. And, you know, I think... Uh, just because we've been through a lot doesn't mean there's not going to be a lot more that happens. We've got to be ready for a lot more to happen. A lot's happened, and a lot more is going to happen. And that's what I want our team to be ready for, is that that is going to be a fact, you know, in the last part of the season moving forward. How much of a concern is it, or how much are you preaching this week, that, you know, the last four games you guys haven't woken up until the second quarter, and two of the big runs allowed on defense on that first drive, just stressing those first series on both sides of the ball and getting off to a better start. Yeah, I think, I think um, you know, I made the point, um, I think, after the game, but just uh, structuring your practice, you know, uh, making a couple adjustments where um, we're out there as a team faster, you know, and uh, making a couple adjustments that way where um, early in the practice, you know, you're in team and you're going. Uh, maybe do that a little bit more, you know, I think starting today. Um, you know, we made a couple adjustments that way to, to focus on it, just like we had some, you know, adjustments that we made coming out of halftime. Uh, I want to make sure that our players know that we're, you know, we're going to make that a point of emphasis, you know, and uh, so hopefully we can start faster. Um, I know that um, that hasn't happened in the last four games, you know, and I think, um, you know, our guys know that, hey, we've made it tough on ourselves, and, hey, why, why did that happen? 
and, and I think it comes down to, you know, the, the execution early on in the game uh, and being aggressive, you know, being aggressive early in the game uh, and bringing that mindset. Um, and not that, hey, just because you're aggressive and just because your mindset's good doesn't mean that the results are going to be there, but you're going to feel differently. So we're going to be practicing on it. We're going to be working on it, and um, hopefully it'll translate. If you win the coin toss, would you consider taking the ball first? Uh, not at this point, no. I mean, weather and all that being under consideration, but no. You mentioned Monday that you guys are still working through things regarding uh, Austin Johnson, the loss of him. Just, do you have any clarity or on who's going to step into that role, or is that just going to transpire throughout the week's practice? Yeah, we're going to let guys compete during practice and, and see how practice goes. And we're going to be looking from within our team, but we want to get those guys a fair chance to compete, get them the reps so that we can see them, uh, and then make our decisions later on in the week. In terms of second running back, both Isaiah and Sonny can that or just from what you saw Sunday there's more of a clearer picture yeah I just I think they're both those guys are both role players for us I think we're both going to need them uh in similar roles uh that they were in last week and um you know we, we really feel like those guys are improving I think we're finding out different ways to use them and Austin and I, and I think that, that that group's making progress and it was good to see Isaiah out there in an NFL game because that's how you improve and um, he looked ready to me, and, and he's going to get better as he goes. So um, hopefully that first experience will, will help him uh, in practice this week.